sequence. I hope you will find time to practice it this week or maybe next week and I'll, I'll try to actually um, tape you something while I'm at my parents and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes. So, um, But uh, I hope you have a good week and you can fit this in. Is this going to be handstand focused but we're also going to use our feet up and we're going to be pursuing this ever elusive tuck jump a bunch of different ways and um, we'll do it without expectations and maybe with some focus on some of the subtle shifts and how they help us. So as always let's just start by closing our eyes and getting really comfortable in our own body and checking in with ourselves. So rooting through the sit bones, reaching through the crown, finding length. A little bit of smiling open of the collarbone which means we're squeezing the shoulder blades ever so lightly towards one another so that we are wide open and especially the outer shoulders are not falling forward but they are coming in one line with the inner shoulders or maybe even a little back depending on how comfortable that feels and then we can slide the sides of the throat back to get the head to center over this new alignment of the shoulders if we weren't quite there yet. And then with the eyes closed as we're going to go upside down, let's just check in with our arms and hands. With the in-breath, bring your arms overhead and just notice how it feels to have the arms reaching up. And then with the out-breath, just returning the hands for a moment wherever they want to fall. A couple more times just like that in-breath reaching. Taking a couple breaths here, just checking in with ourselves, noticing if there is a lot of help that's coming from the neck muscles here and trying to relax the inner shoulders and reach a bit more through the outer shoulders. Also noticing how the scapula, the shoulder blades move when we reach the arms up, out breath, everything down. One more time, in breath up, maybe some more tension this time again on the shoulder blades and out breath down. And then with the eyes still closed, just give your hands a little fold. So a little prayer hands, but with the fingers laced. And then just roll out your wrists here, going one direction and the other direction. Again, just noticing how the hands feel this morning or this evening, whenever you're practicing this with me. And then let the palms push into one another, unlace the fingers so that the long fingers touch one another. And then with the out breath, just slowly roll over the edge of the hand so that the backs of the hands touch now and then that the palms touch again. So a couple of times like this, fingertips point down and then up. So the fingertips point down as the hand, back of the hands touch and then the fingertips come back up as the palms touch. And then we can change the direction. It doesn't change how the fingers point down and up, but it changes where we're touching the backs of the hands first as we're sort of rolling through this movement again just getting comfortable with moving through the hands and then couple breath here just allowing the body to sort of shift a little side to side maybe a couple circles over the hips and then from here take your left thumb let it slide underneath the collarbone until you find this little dimple just before the shoulder begins to round forward again and just give yourself a couple of little um, circles here noticing if there's a little bit of tissue that feels tight and for that you might have to go in a bit and that's okay and then taking your right thumb again sliding it underneath the collarbone until you find that little indentation and then giving it the thumb a couple of little twirls here again just opening up that tissue that sometimes gets a little tight and then lace the hands behind your back squeeze the shoulder blades towards one another bring your laced hands to the outside of the right hip keep squeezing the elbows the shoulder blades towards one another and then slowly dip your right ear towards the right shoulder keep pushing the shoulders away from the ears and breath lift that ear up out of breath come on down and breath lift that ear up, out breath come on down. And breath one more time, lift it up. 
find that awkward clasp behind your back of where it feels like you're hugging or holding a stranger's hand and then bring your hands over to the left hip squeeze the elbows and shoulder blades towards one another reach the shoulders away and then dip your left ear to the left shoulder in breath lift it up out breath left ear to left shoulder in breath lift it up one more time out breath left ear to left shoulder and breath back up and then big shoulder rolls. So you have now unleash un <laughs> the hands, the hands and arms are by the sides of the body again. In breath, exaggerating the shoulder rolls. So getting your shoulders all the way up to the ears and then letting them slump back down. A couple more times, just like that, really letting the shoulder blades move here as well. And then changing the direction, going the other way, go nice and slow, really trying to activate through the shoulders here. One more time, all the way around. And then take your hands, arms out to the side, let your palms face back, make little fists, and then keep your wrists straight. So don't let them bend, keep them straight as you bring your fists as high up the lower back as you can. And you can still do the shoulder rolls one more time without bending through the wrists, without losing that mobility through the shoulders and the shoulder blades. And especially if you feel like you're getting a little stuck, get a little slower with your circle and work a bit more through that range of motion. One more time all the way around. And then in breath, bring the arms up. Open and close your hands a few times. Open and close. And then slowly roll over your knees. You can flutter open your eyes and come onto all fours. Hands under shoulders. From here with the in breath, come onto the knuckles of the hands. With the out breath, set the hands back down. Again, in breath onto the knuckles, out breath down. Don't bend the elbows, keep a slight tone in the core. And a couple more times, just like that. And then with the in breath, shift your weight forward. With the out breath, come on back. In breath, shift your shoulders past the wrists. Out breath, come on back. Couple more times, just like that. In breath, forward. Out breath, back. One more time. In breath, forward. Out breath, back. And then just walk your hands. So with the in breath, fingertips turn out. And then all the way back until you can't turn anymore. And then with the out breath, walk your fingertips back forward. With the in breath, turn your fingertips in so that they face towards one another. And then again with the out breath, walk them forward and out. A couple more times, just like that, going at your own speed, waking up the wrists, the hands. A slow little walks. Eventually ending up with the hands um, facing outward, so the fingertips face outward, and then just shifting a little side to side, feeling the weight shift onto the knuckles of the hands, keeping your eye gaze down but a little forward so that you're not curling too much through the neck, and then turn your hands forward one more time. This time. Put the back of your right hand down. Try to keep your elbows straight. If that's accessible to you, hold here for just a couple breaths. And then come back onto your right palm. Flip your the back of your left hand down. Try to straighten your left elbow as much as you can. Hold for just a couple breaths. Strong core. Shoulders are relaxed and away from the ears. And then come back down onto those hands. And then for a moment, just claw and release, claw and release. So really try to grab your mat and then release, grab one more time and release. And then one more for the shoulders. So forearms parallel, forearms side by side. And then curl the toes under as much and a deep bend in the knees as you need as you walk yourself in and push the earth away from your forearms to so really Try to keep your arms strong here as you're pushing the earth away, soften between the shoulder blades. Keep your eye gaze between the forearms. And then slowly lower the knees down for a moment, widen your knees and push the hips back. Take a few breaths here. And then 
for me a really nice slowly wake up the core and also get our hips to wake up a bit more in this tuck position that we're going to pursue. So come to lay on your back for a moment, just have your legs straight. And in this first few ones, we're going to keep the arms by the sides of the body. So from here with the in-breath, massage the lower back and the center of the belly into the earth as you tuck your knees in and just notice how much easier it is to curve in this tuck position and then not, try not to tuck your tail too much so keep a little bit of a um, neutral spine or maybe even a, just a little bit of an arch almost as if you're doing a back bend and notice how that changes the positioning of the knees so if we're totally tucked we're going to have the knees really into the chest and that might be really hard for an tuck jump position in terms of positioning so maybe if we have a little bit of an arch then it's going to be easier to stagger the hips over the shoulders so we're going to do this a couple more times with the breath so in breath tuck and then out breath go a little bit past neutral in breath tuck and out breath go a little bit past neutral in breath tuck out breath a little bit past neutral and then hug the knees into the chest, rock yourself side to side. And then slowly come up to stand. We're going to go into the same tuck position, which for us is going to be just like a squat. And so um, we're going to have the feet parallel. We can stand at the front of the mat. And the first few, again, we're going to do by the arms by the sides. So with the out brush, shift the hips back and as low as you can go, trying to keep that little mini arch in the lower back. In breath, lift yourself back up. And again, out breath, sit yourself down. In breath, lift yourself back up. And one more time, out breath, sit yourself down. In breath, back up. And then slowly come to lay on your back. We're gonna do that same tap position one more time, this time with the arms overhead. So come to lay on your back, have the arms overhead, push the arms a little bit into the back so that the arms, the shoulders stay active, tuck the chin. And then from here with the out breath, hug into yourself, lift the hips up, and then come to that slightly neutral and just notice how much you have to engage the core to stay in that past neutral. And then again, in breath, hug in, out breath, out. In breath, hug in, out breath. A little baby arch, one more time, in, breath, hug, in, out, breath, baby arch. Last time, in, breath, and out, breath. And then slowly roll yourself over to the side. Let's come back up to stand one more time. Standing at the top of your mat, this time with the arms up, we've got a squat, strong core. Really think about how, <laughs> getting the hip bones to come deeper into the hip socket as you squat down in breath back up and again strong core with the out breath lift the hips down come down to the point where you can still control in breath back up one more time out breath back down and then this time with the next out breath forward fold walk yourself over to the left side of the mat and then with the next out breath over to the right, couple more times, just like that. Beginning to bend and straighten the knees here if you'd like. Strong legs, strong core. And then let's grab our feet up. And wake up our hips here a bit more in this tuck position, playing with us in our feet up. So feet up can come to the top of your mat. You can facing in towards the neck rest. On this first one, we're gonna give ourselves a break and we allow our hands to come to rest here onto the top two um, beams. And then we're just gonna jump up. And then again, we can play with this. We can hug into ourselves and then slide a little back arch. Hug into ourselves with the in breath and then a slight little back arch. Squeeze your inner thighs in towards one another. Slight little back arch. One more time, squeeze the inner thighs, hug into yourself. 
slide little back arch. And then one more time, slowly lower yourself down. One more for the shoulders. So let the hands come forward and then come into this variation of puppy pose where you allow the chest to sort of come through the arms. Arms stay straight, head is heavy, strong core even here. And really try to hollow out your armpits so you get a bit more stretch. Nice deep long breath. And then again, let's walk ourselves in. We can wake up the hamstrings here a bit more. So again, we're still giving ourselves a break, having the hands right here on those two bars. Walk yourself in, and then as if you're in down dog, one leg straightens a bit more, the other leg straightens, keeping the front of the leg strong. And then from here, come onto the tippy toes, deep bend into the knees, hug yourself up. Again, slight back arch and curl in. And then in the spirit of getting the legs to wake up a little bit more, now straighten the legs over the body, hug everything into the center line. From here with the out breath, let your right leg reach backwards as the left leg reaches forward, keeping the hips square forward, big stretch of the hamstrings, Reach that left leg back up, and then with the out breath switching, now the right leg reaches down towards the floor as the left leg reaches back, in breath back up. One more time, just like that, out breath reach through the straight left leg forward and the straight right leg backwards, as if you're trying to do a split here, going to the other side, and then slowly tap the knees in towards the chest, and come on back down one more time that little puppy pose variation with the help of your chair letting the chest come on through squeezing the shoulder blades towards one another strong core take a few breaths here degree of difficulty so we're going to place the neck again into this little opening but now the hands are going to stay back they're going to be by the sides of the of the feet so um, of your uh, headrest I'm sorry of your feet up so towards the knees maybe on piano fingers so you're sitting on your fingertips and then deep into the knees and hop yourself up and you can play here with a little bit more arch, a little bit more hugging in with the in-breath, squeezing the inner thighs in towards one another, a little bit more arch, a little bit more in-breath, a little bit more arch, a little bit more in-breath, a little bit more arch, in-breath, and then straighten the legs. One more time, our hamstring stretch, dipping the left toes towards the earth, as the right leg goes back, so as if you're trying to split. Switching sides with the breath. One more time on each side. And then curl both knees in towards the chest. Lower the feet down. One more opportunity for this little variation of puppy stretch. On your feet up. Letting the chest come through, letting the head be heavy. Stretching through the shoulders here. Now we're going to wake up our hip flexors a bit more. We're going to use our fit feet up for that again. Trying to see which angle might work best. If you can watch me on this first one. So I can put my hips down and again I have my hands now around the wooden beams and I try to push up and straighten the legs and push up and straighten the legs. I might not lift my core up but I can and my, my uh, hips up but I can feel them getting lighter. So I'm pushing it off so that I can feel them getting lighter. 
One more time. With the out breath, strong energy going down, pushed out, and then come back down for a moment. Just step away from your feet up, give yourself a little shimmy and shake, shake everything out, come forward one more time. Going to give ourselves a break from all this strong work by getting a bit more into our hamstrings and hip flexors. So from here, step your right foot forward. With the in-breath, come forward, strong tone in the core. And then with the out-breath, flex the toes of the right foot back. One more hamstring stretch. In-breath, forward, tone the core so you feel more of a stretch to the left hip flexor. And again, out-breath, come on back. And then from here, maybe that right leg can lift. Then spring it forward, tone the core, come up more to neutral. And then again with the out breath, stretch, lift, set it down, step your left foot in, step your right foot, right foot back. Again with the out breath on this first one, just give yourself that hamstring stretch with the in breath coming up, tone the core, big stretch of that right hip flexor this time. And then with the out breath, come on back, see whether you can lift that right leg up. In breath, come forward, strong tone through the core. Out breath, come on back, lift up. In breath, come on forward. And then from here, with the out breath for a moment, let's just lay on our belly. Rest the forehead down and shimmy the hips side to side. Give those hips a little bit of a break. From here, Come up to seated. You can sit in straddle lengthwise on your mat so that you have the benefit of the mat giving you a bit more traction and come into a wide-legged straddle. You can have your feet up, up close by but maybe have the padded side facing you. And then from here we're just going to play with being in straddle, moving side to side. Maybe with the out breath coming over the left leg, next out breath over the right leg, noticing which side feels tighter. Maybe a couple of times through the center, pointing the toes, keeping the legs really strong. Just moving a little side to side, back and forth, and then eventually coming to face your left leg, straightening the upper body over that leg keeping that right leg that you're not paying attention to so much, still active here, still pointing the toes, even though you're turning away from that leg. And then maybe a little micro movement here with the breath, so with the out breath, maybe coming a bit more over the left leg, strong core, and breath lift us up. Again, out breath, come over that leg, and breath back up. One more time, out breath over that leg, and breath back up, and then switching to your Right side, so again, out breath over that straight leg, toes pointed, in breath up, out breath over that leg, in breath back up. A few more times like that, out breath over that straight right leg, in breath back up. Last time, out breath over that straight leg, in breath back up. And then coming to maybe having the hand slide under the calf, maybe getting all the way towards the heel reaching the right arm up and finding a little side bend here again we can play with our expansion and contraction so in breath maybe getting a little taller twisting a bit more so the shoulders stack more out breath coming a bit more to the side right hip stays heavy as we twist over and one more time out breath over towards our left side in breath up through the center getting that right hand underneath the calf, the heel, wherever you can reach. And then again, moving with the breath. In breath up, and out breath over. In breath up, out breath over. In breath up, out breath over. One more time, in breath up, and out breath over. Stacking the shoulders. And breath up this time from here with the out breath, come forward, but try to get your belly down before you ever think about getting the head, the nose, anything else down. 
So you're really trying to keep the back, especially the lower back flat so that it doesn't round, keeping a little bit of an arch in the lower back. Maybe if it becomes accessible, coming a little lower. Maybe resting the hand on that middle bar, center bar. Maybe even coming down onto our forearms. Yogi's choice. Holding it for just a couple more breaths. Taking a bit of a respite. And then from here again, walk yourself back up. Come on back up. Slowly bring the legs towards one another. And then just allow them to sort of come side to side. Releasing the hips again, moving the legs side to side. A little bit more for the hamstrings, come to stand at the front of the mat again. And then from here, Again, we can use our feet up in the beginning so that we have something that's nice and high and rest into this, shifting our weight more into the whole sole of the foot, keeping a strong contraction in the core so that the lower back feels supported, trying to stick our tail feather up a bit. Trying to move back and forth until we really feel the stretch moving into the belly of the hamstring, so the center, not up at the top, and then maybe the hands can move a little lower. And then maybe one more time, even lower. Strong legs, strong core. And then slowly move the feet up off to the side for a moment. Come to seated and take a couple of breaths here. Just close your eyes and notice how the body feels now that we've spent some time warming it up. Spending some time to notice the shoulders, the wrists, the hands, everything that we have moved already. From here, if it gives you a bit more confidence, you can take your feet up and move it so that it faces the wall. We're going to practice our straddle jumps. So straddle and tuck jump are somewhat related. And then again, we're going to give ourselves this little break of having the hands up high in the beginning. And straddle jump, even though we're going to straddle out, we're going to have the feet together at first, then straddle up and then straddle on down straddle on up and straddle on down so the feet go out wide and come up and then they come together as we land out wide come up and come together as you land a couple more times just like that out wide and they come up and land softly and last time out wide up and land as softly as you can and then again giving ourselves this opportunity of puppy stretch with our feet up taking just a few breaths here And then move your feet up to the side. If you need to get your bolster, and because it gives you more confidence to do the hops in handstand, you can get your bolster ready. We are not going to go to the tuck jump right away. And I'm also going to go on this first one. We just want to play with going up. So we haven't warmed up that much in handstand, so we're just going to go up a few times. So whichever version of handstand you want to go up in, you go up in. I'm just going to kick up first with my right leg and then with the left. My hands are under the shoulders. I'm clawing the earth a little bit. I point my toes and I find my balance. And 
that was pretty nice um, and unexpected. So do that a couple of times, just kicking up. I'm gonna go to my left side next, just to stay balanced. Remember the idea stays between the thumbs and we're just getting warm. And if the hands feel like they're still getting a little cranky, we can roll them out one more time. Wrists, I mean, I'm actually also gonna get my elbows a bit warm. So I make a strong fist, curl it back. And then I flex and flare the fingers just to give the elbows a chance to wake up a bit more too. This is one of my favorite elbow exercises that I picked up from Eric Wong, whose uh, range of motion app I have, and I love that thing. It's great, even though I still suck a, little, a lot of these things. I know, I'm supposed to be giving myself more with pep talk, but oh well. So we've done our little fill. My heart rate and my breath are sort of back to neutral. The next one, and I know you didn't feel like you had much success with this one, so you can use, let's try it from the ground up first, and then if this doesn't work, we're gonna use our feet up again. So I place my hands. I'm gonna start off with my right leg, so it's already up there and bent, and I'm trying to kick my heel to the wall, and that my left leg just follows, and I try to land my feet on the wall. So now I'm in my tuck position, and maybe I find a little balance here, and then I come out of it. And again, I'm going to try both sides, even though I might have a preferred side to kick up with. I shouldn't expect that one side is always better, especially if it's a mobility thing, like having one leg up. So again, <laughs> okay. So no, not much success on my right side when that's the kick up leg. And maybe you had no success at all trying to do this. So now this is where the feet up might come in really handy. I can shorten the distance that I have to go up by using the feet up as a place to place my feet. And I'm gonna have it about halfway on my mat. I may be four inches away from the wall I step my foot up, now it's halfway, one leg is already up and bent, I bend the other leg and I hop in. Again, this is going to be with a padded part of the feet up so that you, when you come back, you land on something soft. So again, I can do this on both sides. This shortens the distance to the floor. So I'm already having my hips a little higher and more stacked and it makes it a little easier and maybe four inches is a little too close for me because um, I find myself having a harder time now to, um, to get with, to the wall with the same amount of ease as, as I did before. So maybe if you have a hard time because your foot reaches the wall right away, then move the hands back a little bit, move your feet up a little, back a little bit. So if this felt okay with the feet up, then the next place we can progress to is to just have one foot on a block or a couple of blocks, or we can try it again now that you've sort of gotten the body acquainted with this idea that we can stack the hips by seeing if we have more success now that we have done this a few times with the floor being a little closer to those stacked feet. One of the things that I really have to think about is to bring that one leg up and not get the other one down. So that might be helping us again. So um, we're going to try this again. And this time we're just going to we are going to give ourselves the cheat of the bolster, and that's okay. So we can have something soft at the wall. But here are a couple of the key actions that I want us to think about. The minute the hips start to go up when we jump up, I want our eye gaze to go back 
into the center of the room so that the shoulders are not holding us back, so that the shoulders have a chance to stack with the hips. And then I also want us to think about doing a little bit of a back arch, to really think about sticking your butt towards the wall. So I know um, one of the things that holds us back is that we are just sort of kicking the hips and, uh, and the hips stay back, and that just doesn't work. So let's see how we fear, and success would be to touch the wall less, or the bolster in this particular case. That would be our measure of success, and we can just start out here. So, again, no expectations. A few hops, giving ourselves permission to just experiment. like it's not going anywhere give yourself a break take a few breaths roll out your wrists I promise we're actually going to move on to something different very shortly because we have done all these lovely straddle things straddle should technically be easier I haven't found it to be so yet but let's check it right let's see what we're doing with straddle so same idea hands on your shoulders and now instead of jumping up into a tuck position, we're going to just jump up and then maybe let's focus on how high the hips go and more focus on landing lightly. So can you get yourself stacked for a moment so that when you come down, it doesn't feel like you're trying to catch yourself and you're too heavy. And I will say this about myself, when I do these, I can feel my head is sticking forward too much because I keep touching this. So that tells me that I do this instead of this. And that's okay, this is part of my learning. So um, I think one of the things that I really want us to think about is not to get frustrated and to really just play with it. So we're gonna do a couple more like this. I wanna keep adding these to our repertoire and then we're also going to start to next play with a negative as well. So let's do two more like this. And just pushing the earth away, looking back, pushing the earth away, looking back. And now we can move the bolster out of the way. And we can play with a negative next. And the negative is kicking up, any which way you want to kick up, and then actually coming down, squeezing in, and see, what, see whether we can hold our tuck. So again, it looks something like this. I'm going to do my kick up. I slide my feet down. And squeeze everything in and then I maybe find a little hang time. So the more I squeeze in and hug into the center, hug into the core, the better it should feel, the more balanced I should feel like I'm getting. So let's try that and see how it goes for us. All right, a couple more times, just like that. I'm gonna change the leg that I'm kicking up with. You can catch your breath and just play with it. Again, tuck the feet in, push the earth away, hug everything into the center line, and try to land lighter than I just did. <laughs> All right. So this was a reverse work on straddle. Let's roll our wrists out for a moment. Maybe grab one wrist and roll it out, roll it the other way. Grab the other wrist, roll it the other way. And then just give your hands a little shake, a little flop, a little shake, a little flop. Shoulders a little shake and flop. So we're going to do this one more time. And now we're going to switch to 
work the straddle in the negative. So again, maybe lean the hips a little into the wall so that you have something that feels like you're getting support and then really try to stretch the legs so they're really active. You don't want to have a floppy foot. The feet are really active. The toes are pointed so that when we slowly open the straddle and come down, we really feel like the legs are not just dead weight. They're supporting us in our journey coming down in straddle. So again, and then a kick up. I can get a little closer if it feels like the wall is not there enough for me. <laughs> it definitely wasn't there enough for me. So I was maybe about five inches away. So I'm gonna come a little closer. Maybe now my fingertips are three inches away from the wall so that I have something for my hips to lean into. Again, I'm sending my eyes towards my thumb tips. <laughs> and I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm getting a little tired. All right. Easier leg helps, hips to the wall. Super active legs in my straddle here. And so what I can tell you is I get stuck once I'm past a certain point. I can tell my shoulders are not supporting me. Feels really tight here. So just be a little curious where you feel stuck, where that is feeling restricted, not open enough, not strong enough in your body. So it's really interesting for me. I haven't tried the, the tuck down feels fine. I've never tried to straddle down like this with the hips resting. And I could, it was very interesting to feel how tight this all of a sudden got. And I think it's just testament to the fact that I just don't engage the shoulders enough and I really do need them more. So now we're going to move on and we're gonna to try to do our hops and pincha. And again, we're gonna do the same procession and progression. So we can do it without the feet up first and just have one leg bent up and see how we fare with this. So pincha, any pincha variation that you wanna pick, that you're comfortable with, one leg bends up, the other one hops up and I get my hang time for a short moment or maybe not. Other leg bends up, a lot less soft. And really think about squeezing into the center line as you push the earth away in these to help with being active, being strong and supporting your body from the ground up and also from the core. So if we had no success with one leg up, because the hammies are not that open, the legs aren't as long, not fair, right? We all have these different things we get to work with. So we can use our um, feet up again to shorten the distance, bend one leg up and hop up. Squeeze everything into the center line, find your hang time here. And then come on back down and take a breather. So we want to do this a couple times just to get the body used to this idea that we have an opportunity to jump up from here. And we also want to get used to this idea that we should push very strongly into the earth. Because one of the things that happens, especially in Pincha, I can feel myself sort of collapsing in. When I do the jump from the ground up. So the more I can sort of push and hold and push and hold, the more sturdy and the better I will feel when I go to that variation where I jump up with both legs. So let's keep the feet up here for now. We're going to do this, um, instead of trying it with both legs from the ground up, we're going to do it from the beginning, from the feet up, just so that we have a lot of leverage. The legs are really high. And again, 
we don't have to have super flexy hammies here because we can keep the legs bent even here we need to bend them anyways to jump up and get the feet to go off again same drill as before we can squeeze everything into the center line and then maybe both legs come back down once we've done this a couple of times so give yourself really an opportunity to try this a few times we can see whether we can want to progress to the next variation which would be closer to the ground hopping in and you can watch me on this first one what you'll notice is how much I get my head to start to lower because I'm not pushing enough away yet my shoulders are not strong enough so I can feel my head is touching into my thumbs and again this has something to do both with shoulder strength but also with flexibility so give that a couple of goes and just notice what that feels like and then we're gonna we're gonna go to our straddle hops next which we can't use our feet up for because it's just not quite uh it's not it's not really that helpful i find especially because when our legs come out to the side it's more like a balance beam concept so i walk myself in again I have the same issue you can sort of see how my head gets heavy and it lands and if I can just work on that in pincha I think it's really going to help me also in handstands to get a little bit more ease to feel a little less restricted whenever I try this so this is one of the reasons why we're doing this because I think it will eventually get us comfortable to do this in pincha and once we're comfortable to do this in pincha we'll be comfortable to do it in handstand and while it takes more strength to hold your tuck handstand, it actually feels more stable as well. So to get away from the wall, to feel a little bit more solid in your handstand, those are really invaluable tools to get us to that level of comfort. So this is one of the reasons why we're doing this. So we've done a lot. I think we should start to cool down. And I'd like to invite you to do any last inversions you'd like to do here. So I'm just going to come into my regular pincha and then maybe open up my shoulders a little bit more by getting my hips to the wall. So soften a little between the shoulder blades. Come on up. Look on through. And push away. And hold. Even here, even though I'm just opening my shoulders and I'm getting a bit of a back bend in, I can still work on pushing the earth away so that I build that stability. And from here, we're actually going to take our feet up out again. And we're going to use it for a little bit of heart opening. So you can place it on your mat. I'm going to pull it away from the wall a little bit. So now my little opening is right here and I can get my head to come back a little bit more, place my hands here and then just let the arms drop over. And this is like a very, it's almost like a variation of bridge pose. I can walk my hand, uh, my heels, my feet in a bit more and then grabbing back and pulling the shoulders open a bit more. I want a bit more for the shoulders I can place the hands to the wall maybe push up and lower again push up hands are against the wall and lower push me I'm on carpet so I'm pushing myself away from the wall and lower it's just a big front body stretch and then come on back down and let's just move that feet up out of the way And then in a kneeling position or standing, Yogi's choice, 
I have my hands at least shoulder height. I have a micro bend in my <coughs> excuse me, elbow. And then I'm reaching the other hand back and pull the core down and in. So bottom of the rib cage down and in. I mean, core is strong. And I'm just really stretching through the front of that arm that is against the wall. I can change position. So now my opposite arm comes up, little micro bend, other arm goes back, shoulder blades a little squeeze, strong core. Holding here for a couple breaths. Slowly release one more for the wall. It was actually really nice to release the hips, especially the uh, T band. So my feet are a couple inches away from the wall, no more than that. And now I'm going to try to get my whole lower back to touch into the wall. So really tone the core, don't let the back of the head leave the wall. Really stretches the front of the thighs, maybe a little bit into the IT band, the tensha fascia lata that gets super tight. So really try to curl it and release. And then one more time, push the lower back, not just the tailbone, but really try to make that space go away. It's really hard, I know. And release. Beautiful. And so from here, we're going to do a couple more stretches with the legs up the wall, since we're already at the wall, and it's always such a lovely way to finish. So get your hip to the wall, swing the legs up the wall, and then bring the arms out to the side maybe one more straddle but this time really make the straddle not too wide you're not stretching like you did in the prep work we're just stretching now to slowly release tension maybe the arms come out a little wider a little higher so that we have a reciprocal stretch to the front of the shoulder one more time nice deep full breath And slowly bring the hands by the sides of the thighs, push them so that they're leaning against the wall for a moment, come into this lovely supported L, arms overhead, legs against the wall, take a couple of breaths here, make your head heavy, make your upper back heavy, let everything fall into the support of the earth, and then cross your right leg over the left, turn your left foot in a little bit so that the inside of the left foot faces more towards the wall and this half version of cow face pose we're going to also lift the upper body up and get our left hand with the palm facing up towards and the center of the shoulder blade and then let the head rest into that bent arm trying to get the shoulder to move back a bit more and let's just stay here for a few breaths if it feels better for you to have one hand on top of that left elbow, sort of pushing down, you can do that. Relax the neck, the face. And then slowly unwind from here and bring that right leg back up straight cross the left leg over turn the right in step more in towards the wall so internal rotation to the right hip stack your left knee on top of the right put a deep bend into your right elbow and get your right palm between the shoulder blades and then again you can pull down on that right elbow with the left hand if you feel like you're getting better stretch this way let the legs fall towards the wall and take a few breaths here. Nice, deep, long in and out breath. Again, 
then slowly release the arm first, arms out to the side, uncross the legs. This time you're going to put a bend into the right knee again and come into figure four against the wall, only sliding the sole of the left foot down until you feel a stretch in the outer right hip without the lower back lifting away from the earth. Now cross your left arm over the chest, put a bend into your right elbow and pull that left arm across the chest. Make the back of your head heavy here and stay for a few breaths here as well. And then slowly release that side, put a bend into your left knee, cross the left ankle over the right thigh, slide the sole of the right foot down, cross the right arm over the chest, and catch it in the crook of your left elbow, and then pull that arm across as you keep pushing that outer left knee towards the wall. You're going to pull that right arm across the chest over to the right side, left side as well, and stay with your breath. Again, very nice and slow release. Rest the legs back against the wall and if you teach me to find any last stretches you'd like to take before we're getting ready for a Shavasana. Settling into the breath, into the body one more time. And very slowly bend the knees in towards the chest as you deepen the breath. Maybe taking all the small movements here for a change. So wiggling the toes, the fingers, maybe making small movements here against the wall. Before we roll ourselves over to the side, I'm taking a few breaths here. And then using our strong arms and hands to slowly bring ourselves back up to seat it. Taking the wall and the earth both for support here. Letting the hands rest, letting the back of the head rest against the wall. Taking a deep in breath, reaching the arms out and forward and upward. With the out breath, sliding the folded hands heavy to the forehead for clear, loving, compassionate thoughts. One more deep in breath, with the out breath returning the hands to the mouth for clear, loving, compassionate speech and blessings. 